Hey guys, um, I'm going to do a little segment on another one on food safety. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I think there's a uh, little gap of knowledge with uh, packing coolers and bringing them with you, say to work, or say to wherever, or at the shows you go to, or a weekend, or when people travel for bodybuilding contests and they think that throwing a couple ice packs in a large cooler with their food for three days is enough, and it is not. Um, some of this is probably a little repetitive or redundant, but I just want to touch on it and keep it a little simpler, okay? So first, time temperature danger zone is between 140 and 140. That is where bacteria can kind of double in growth, okay? Bacteria never stops growing, even in the freezer. It just, slow, it just uh, grows at an extremely slow rate. So obviously if you go from 40 to 60 to 50 to 60 to 70, bacteria growth goes faster and faster. Hence, while you never want to leave food out at room temperature, 70 degrees. After two hours, food sitting out at 70 degrees should be thrown away, okay? So what I did was I just set two coolers, identical coolers, identical little containers, and I put a thermometer in each. And I put two ice packs, freezer packs, you know everyone buys the ones they come with, one below and one on top of it, and one, and I just took a plastic bag full of ice with the other. So this is what I found out, okay? So today, this is 16 hours later, ice is melted. I checked this, I chewed this morning. And as you can see here, I put a thermometer inside, replicating what your food would be, okay? And I put the ice on top, like this, put it in here, closed it up. I'm gonna tell you the results in a second. Ice pack, same thing, so you guys know I'm not cheating. Same exact identical thermometer, identical. And ice packs, put one on the bottom, I put one on the top. So this is what I found, and yesterday, I checked the thermometer temperatures in two hour intervals. <clears throat> two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours. Now, which is awesome, at room temperature, this is not in your car, okay, this is not in the winter. Room temperature in here is about 70 degrees, 70 degrees. Um, at two hours, 42, 41. Ice tend to be a little bit colder than the ice packs, but I can tell you pretty much from hour two, four, six, there was no temperature change from both coolers, identical coolers, just different forms of uh, uh, cooling process. At hour eight, this started to get a little warmer, 43 degrees, which is still fine. It's not gonna be the end of the world if it's still 40 to three degrees. Yes, bacteria is growing a little bit faster, but that's nothing to worry about. This still stayed cold, 41 to, one, uh, uh, 41 to 40, still stayed cold. Probably too, as the ice melts a little bit, the ice kind of like, goes over the container. Now, I woke up this morning, 16 hours later, and this was at 50, 52 degrees. Ice packs are now losing their effectiveness. And now if you travel, there's no way to really make them freeze or cold again to the point you do in your own fridge. And the ice in here was 43 to 44, even though ice is almost completely melted. Um, like I said, probably it melted around the container and the, uh, the water was still cold. It'll still remain cold for a while. So long story short, when you're traveling, say for a couple of days, and, and it's probably best to carry ice because you can refill the ice, you can keep the food going, you can keep it cold for longer, and you can get ice anywhere. If you're leaving for work and it's two to six, uh, two to eight hours, room temperature, and it's in your office, or it's fall day outside, ice packs will do fine. But if you're outside and you're leaving your cooler in the sun or your car, which you should never do, really either one's not gonna work that well. That time period is gonna shrink right down on how uh, cool you keep that food. And I, again, one of the reasons why I, I, I did this is I still get clients with foodborne illness. They're thrown up from bad chicken, they're thrown up from bad meat, and I know a lot of you guys out there would be like, well, I, I never have to do that, and I never thrown up. Well, you know what? It's only gonna happen once when you're peeing out your ass and you're throwing up or you get huge distended belly and upset stomach day of the show because your food's been spoiled. It's just not worth it. And, and the thing is this, food, all food has bacteria on it. 
all food does. What you need for bacteria growth is protein and moisture. So chicken and meats, obviously protein and moisture, you're gonna have the highest great, uh, rate of uh, bacteria growth. And even if you cook your chicken and you're still sitting there and you touch it, do this move, do that, put it in the refrigerator uh, and with a 30 minute period and cool it, there's still bacteria on that chicken. It's just not enough to get you sick. That's why a lot of people might take chicken out of the freezer, put it at room temperature to thaw out, and when you thaw it out for 24 hours, you don't get sick, and then sometimes you do, because it's all a matter of the number of bacteria that's on the meat, okay? So you always want exercise caution. I don't know why anybody wants to flirt with having diarrhea throwing up. Not me. So I hope you guys got a little segment from this, and, and you know, it, it might sound silly, but you know what? This happens all the time. I hear it all the time. And in my mind, it's just like, it's such an easy thing to prevent. Last tip, when you use ice and you bring an ice with you for bags, use the heavy Ziploc freezer bags and double bag it. That way it does, it's not gonna leak over your cooler. I mean, obviously they claim the Ziploc, Zoc lock is gonna lock up everything, but you know, jostles around, might open. So double bag it. I never had a problem double bagging it. All right guys, till the next time.